Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video I'm going to show you how to wire up some lovely LED lights because yeah, I've been meaning to change these ones up here for a little while and I have the lights, I have all the stuff so yeah, let's have a little look at it today. Uh, these are the ones that are going to get replaced up here. You can see I've done <laughs> the worst job ever in actually setting them up right. So we're going to replace them with some of the spotlights that we've been putting in other parts of my room and in general guys I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go over to these lights because they're relatively cheap they're like uh, 10 bucks kind of thing these ones are 10 watts and you can see by this that they're clearly bright enough for a very big tank like this yes so I'm going to start to swap over all my lights and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the journey So let's have a little gander at these lights and we'll see what we can do with them today. Alright, so you can see here guys, right, that the lights are, they're not bad. You can see in the tanks themselves that the lights are not bad, but yeah, I've never been too keen on these lights with that type of connection near water because if I splash water at this connector right here, it will short right and we're in a shrimp room with loads and loads of water and stuff so yeah I want to try and change this so that the connector is at least waterproof minimal and anyway guys as I said I love I love this look here that you get with spotlights so we have some spotlights over here let's have a little look at what I have so we have a whole box of these VTEC floodlights that I've ordered let's grab two of them because that's what we'll be using today and I thought guys, uh, stick you guys on my chest here and we'd have a fiddle with these and see how we get on. Alright, so let's have a little look at these. Quickly unbox them. Um, I will leave a link for these in the description. They seem to have gotten a lot of them back in stock now. You'll see what the issue with these lights is straight away. And that is, guys, remember to take your stickers off the glass in the front. And that is that they're very, the cable is very, very short, you see it? So, today we need to find a solution to this. Let me unbox the other one at the same time. No looking at my belly, please. My big flabby gut. Let's unbox these and yeah, we'll figure out something in a way that we can wire these together as well. Right? Because it, yeah, the, the connectors for these guys are kind of expensive. Right? And I mean... Like, they are literally like 10 bucks for one connector to join two of these together. And I thought, man, that is an awful lot. See, when you have this many tanks in your shrimp room and you want to do stuff like that, 10 bucks a connector is too much. Right, I can buy uh, normal connectors, kind of like this, cheap as chips, that are not waterproof, right? So, I don't want to go with these, but yeah, we're going to see what's actually inside this light, I think, today, or is it sealed? It actually looks like it might be sealed or, yeah, I think it's actually siliconed in at the front as well. Is the other one the same? I think it is, so yeah, we can't actually open this. So I was thinking, how can I wire these so that we are not showing these connectors like this? And it's fine, guys, if it's something like that with our plug on it, because we have a waterproof a rubber plug as well that is also grounded um, so we might try and wire two of them into one but I think that might be a little bit hard to do as well so we probably will have to go with one of these open type connectors until we find a fix right guys let me know in the comment section if you know an alternative to this that is waterproof because the ones I see online that you can buy are 10 bucks a pop and it's too much for me to buy for all this amount of stuff right so yeah let me know the best thing I, yesterday I was looking at things like uh, shrink wrap stuff shrink tubing where you use a heat gun to uh, shrink it and all that stuff but yeah I can't figure out a way to join so many cables together into one connector right, and I wondered could we do this in sequence even so like could we have like uh, live going to uh, the live on the on the plug and then have our neutral going to the live on the next one and so on and so forth yeah, i'm not sure how this works 
I probably for this way of doing it, I'd probably be better getting an electrician in to do it. Anyway guys, let me know in the comment section your thoughts and whatever else because yeah, I'm interested to know. If we can save a bit of money doing it ourselves, I will, but yeah. Let's, uh, first of all, let's untighten these because they're really tight. I don't know why they put them on so tight, maybe it's just for the box. But it's mega tight. And we're just going to use screws because there's a wood wooden beam part under there as well uh, that we're going to screw into. But I thought I'd do the electronic part on this first because it's the part that might be the easiest way. So let's grab our connector. I think guys, just for today, right, I'm going to go with a connector like this. Two going into this. Light going to each tank. Wires coming off this to our waterproof plug. And uh, we'll see how we can waterproof this. Maybe we should put in a little box or something. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out, right? But I'm going to grab some screwdrivers and stuff and I'll be back in a second. These uh, rubbery plugs, there's a screw on the side. That you have to take out. If I remember how to do this correctly. And then I think it pulls apart the plug, does it? Yeah, it does. Oh, this base part pulls open. You see it? This is what you wire to, but we need, actually need to put a cable on this as well, so... Yeah, I have uh, lots and lots of spare cable. Anything, guys, that you throw out that has a three-pin plug on it, this is what the connector looks like if you're going into a plug in Norway. Uh, but the normal three-pin pin plugs are pretty cool. Good. Let's try this black cable. And I have a pair of scissors here. You want to, let's try this black cable, but if you don't have any other cable, you can use any cable that is grounded, basically. So, yeah, our lights are just, just up here, and the timer for them is just there, so yeah, we only need maybe a meter of cable or something for this. So let's get that done. Meter of cable. I think that is long enough. I think it is long enough. So let's cut our cable like so. And then, guys, the way I've always done this is I've never had any of the proper tools for doing this in my entire life. So you just have to be careful, right? See, like so, this as an example that has just been poorly done. You see, see how it's, they're all frayed and stuff. Open that has been poorly done. Same with the other one. You see it? There's no need for the cable to be this long. And th these wires at the end should be finished a little bit better than this. It's just someone's done it fast and they've not done a very good job. Right? So the way I've always done it is you go down maybe four centimetres and you take a pair of scissors like this or a knife and you just go around it really slowly like this. Turning it as you go along. And then, with a bit of luck, guys, you can actually just pull it to the side. You see how it's opened? Do it on each side, right? And if you go through the cable anywhere, start again. Right, so if I nick the cable here, if you can see copper, start again. It's not the perfect way to do it, but it is uh, how you do it if you don't really have all the tools and whatever else. See how easy that opens up? It's literally just on one side here, right there. There you go, we have released it. Right, and then you just have to pull it off, if you have the power. Now if you have a pair of pliers or something, it's probably a good thing to pull off here. I see, I probably should try and find a pair of pliers because we're going to need them for other jobs. I have loads of pliers, but you know what it's like. There you go, it was just that tiny little bit of rubber there that was holding it. Right, so you have the wires like this. And then, guys, you uh, you need to do the same thing again. Again, get your scissors or your wire cutters. Go around really slow, don't go in hard enough that you can feel the copper. And then push with your thumb and it comes off, you see it? And you're left with a little 
nub of copper like this. Again, next one, push with your thumb, little nub of copper. It's maybe not big enough that one, but we can make it bigger. The smaller it is, I think it looks neater. You push with your thumb, off, and there it is. Right, so there's what I've just done, right, with no tools. You can see the difference here. There's what I've just done. This is what these lights came like. You see the difference in how poorly that they've done this? Ah. Because, you see the size, the reason I'm making a deal about it guys is because you see the size of the plug, look how much wire, ex spare wire they've actually put in it. Once I've wired this, I'm going to be seeing this, this, this cabling here. So let me see, we have to go through this little plug hole here and I'm going to try and keep these wires in good condition with them spreading all over the place because it just makes it easier in general. If I remember this is how you do it. You know, it probably would have made sense to not strip the wires before I push them through but <laughs> you live and learn don't you guys. So let's see if we can push this one through. so tight but that is why it is like a waterproof plug because it is so tight and so there's a lesson learned there don't do that part there until you push the wire through then do this part <laughs> I haven't made a an ass of the connections at the end but yeah do it that way so we have on this type of Norwegian ground plug or whatever country you're from you if you have this type that right the ground is in the middle I think live is on this side and neutral is on the other side. I don't see if it's marked on here. Uh, I can't see. I can't see. I think it's that way anyway. Right, so the way I've always done it is I grab the ground because this is going to be the hardest part where the ground is because the ground is in behind there. Let's see if this screwdriver fits in there. And I'm screw it a wee bit. So the plate opens up in there. Or oh, you may as well open this up as well in the beginning. Remind guys, remember, I'm not an electrician. You do all this stuff at your own risk. <laughs> I don't want you killing yourself. Right, I am by no means an expert, but I can at least wire a plug. If you're not sure, just get someone else to do it. All right. I'm going to unscrew the next one. Like so. And maybe we can turn this around a little bit because uh, we don't need we don't need it to be open fully. We just need to be able to need to get the cables through. You see? Do you see? Does it make sense? Comprehendi? This one is tight, but I suppose they want it tight so that you, I'm going to take that off, I suppose they want it tight so it's as uh, secure as possible with it being a waterproof connector. I don't think I've had one this tough to come off. Just bear in mind as well guys that like I have a camera right in my vision as well. So I'm, I'm actually trying to film and look at the camera at the same time. God damn it, open you mother effer, look. Why won't it come out? You can see me screwing the bloody thing. You see it, I'm screwing it. Come out, you wee mother. It's coming in now. So I'm going to cut all this stuff so you never hear me sing mother effer. And whatever else. I'm going to just take one of them completely out because it'll just be easier for us to put it all back together. I'm making an ass of this. This video is going to be five hours long, I'm trying to do one plug. All right, get this thing out of the way. Right, and as you can see, right in there is, is a little screw. And we are going to put this little tab that we've done here, this part here, under it. Over here, and I'm going to go, guys, from 
the top down, and you'll see why in a minute. Top down, and we're going to put it under that screw the cable. You see it? Push it in and under as hard as you can. I probably left that like, like a little bit, tiny bit too short. Push it in as hard as you can. But as long as most of the copper is under that little screw, you're going to go back over the top and then you're going to tighten up that screw because it's going to clamp down on that copper. And I'm going to go from the top across, you'll see what I mean in a second. Like this, you see it? Like that. So it lies across and then we can secure it with that clamp. Now, I think it's this way, brown on the right, left side. Brown on the left side, you're going to go in there, is that, it's not even open. Yeah, so all these jobs are a teeny bit fiddly, but once you get it done, we'll have uh, nice new lights on. That will look much, much better. So it is worth doing this kind of stuff, see how it goes in there. And then we're going to tighten that up. The screwdriver I have for doing this is a little bit big as well. You want to make sure all these screws are tight tight. Now ideally that blue wire should have been under there. Let's see if we can push it through. We can. Because it's now going to go on the other side. Now guys it isn't as fiddly as this. The way I'm doing it here, it just looks fiddly because, yeah, as I, as I keep mentioning, I have a, a camera right in my way. And so normally it is not as fiddly as this. It's probably easier if you take all the all this stuff off here, actually. Like that. Right, so there's nothing in your way. And then we're going to put this side in over here. It should go in pretty easily. Did I unscrew this? I can't remember if I did. I don't think I did. It's never going to go in unless you unscrew it. Yeah, so I think I'll probably cut this video a lot because uh, I'm like 20 minutes in and I've still only put the plug on. But um, yeah, the tighter that you can do all these little bits, guys, the safer that your your setup will be because all your wires will be inside the plug and whatever else. That makes sense. Like so, you see. There you go. And then we have to put on our little plastic clip again this bit here because this is what's going to hold all this wiring in place right so typically that will be for things like if if someone walks through the cable and they accidentally get stuck in it or trip on the cable or something like that it won't pull all the wires out of the socket that's what this little bit here is for these have little bolts as well on them which we're going to put in right now because they're underneath they go under easy under this bit this will be easy to go in let's do one at a time you just have to hold it in place like that and then we're going to close this piece here just until it gets a bite and then we can put the other one on on the other side like so put your finger on it turn it around make sure it gets a bite on this side as well and you can feel it guys when it does get a bite like I can't feel it biting on that side but I can now you see and as you're screwing it will draw that little bolt into its little position and it'll grip. It will grip all these little wires that we've put in. You just alternate between the two, try and make it kind of like even pressure. Going across the top. Alright, so you could probably buy all this kind of stuff, the cabling and whatever else, 
already set up. But uh, yeah, in general, it's cheaper if you buy everything separate. Like I think the plug for this was like 30 kroners, which is three pounds something. So that is that part all done, you see. And it's nice and secure. You want your cabling to be short, so nothing sticks out the plug on this end, because that's what would happen if we used the wiring like this. All right, so we close this now. And by the way, guys, as well, I think these are sold as like rubbery, uh, waterproof connectors. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm pulling this through there. I'm, I'm pretty sure water can get in to that bit as well. Right. So when you're pushing these together, guys, right, you, there's a hole there and there's a hole here. These have to match up. And you'll see as well. This is metal part here. It's to slide in there, and it's the same on the other side. If you do this right. Do excuse Lucy barking in the background. There's one side in, the other side went under. It's very, very tight. It's very tight, but that is probably why. Let's see, that little one went down there, you see it? Go up a wee bit. Let's try that again. Keep an eye on both sides this time. Looking good. Push in all the way. There you have it. Right, so there is our plug. Almost done. Let's get one screw in. That holds everything in place. And that is just the plug, guys. And that's almost 20 minutes. But this plug is a tiny bit complicated, as you can tell. And as I've been saying all the way through this as well, yeah, I would do this much faster if the camera wasn't in the way. So next, we have to strip the wires on the other side as well. So this is what the cable looks like. We have to strip the wires on this side too, because uh, we're going to have to put them into our three-way connector. Same thing again. Try and keep it clean. You're going to go for about four centimeters. Just go through no more. With your scissors, turning the cable as you do it. And pull the wire down like this, right? You see how I can see copper there? Cut that part off. Now, if you're an electrician, you'll have all the proper tools for this, so you won't have this issue that we just had there. But yeah, if you don't, if you don't want to go out and buy the tools, and you're okay with just practicing doing this kind of stuff, do what I said. You don't want to go through the copper, though. That's quite important. You see, not through the copper, not through the copper, not through the copper, and not through the copper. This one hopefully will come off a wee bit easier than it did. We're going to strip the wires the same way we did before. I'm going to give these ones a little bit longer than the last one because yeah, the last one was just a tiny bit too short. Like this, and then push off with your thumb. Back in the day when I used to do a lot of this kind of stuff, I used to use my teeth and just pull it off, but yeah, it's not good for your teeth. The thing is, guys, I think I actually have a wire stripper, but if you have just a pair of scissors hanging around like this, it's not so hard to do. Because copper is quite hard, and the rubber isn't, so it's easy just to make a little incision and pull it off like that, you see? Make sure that they're all tightly together, the strands. And guys, this is where if I was doing like um, one single light to one tank, I would actually uh, match the wires up like this. I'd put a little bit of shrimp crap on each tube first, a little bit of black shrink, shrink tubing on it, on each one. And then I would solder each connector to each of them, and then I'd pull over the shrink wrap over the joint, heat it with a heat gun, and then you'd obviously have one bigger piece of shrink wrap that would go over the entire lot and seal it all together, right? But we want to add multiple lights. So I think I'm going to have to go and try and find my little screwdriver. I'll be back in one second. Yeah, I couldn't find a screwdriver there. You know what it's like when you have kids and they take stuff with it in the back, right? So you want to open all these connectors up.
all of them because they'll just make it easier. And these connectors are probably okay as long as there's no, like nothing can contact them at all. No fluid can be spilled in them. But if you think this connector can somehow fall in your tank, then don't use it. Because what's quite funny is, guys, I've bought, I have bought waterproof connectors before. Waterproof little boxes and whatever else. And you open them up and what do you think is inside? Because people tell me these things are not safe and every single connection box I've ever opened has these inside. Alright, let's just go with whatever way these wires are, I think. Because it'll be easiest. I'm going to bend the outside ones in a tad so they kind of can just go in like this, you see. One, two, three, in. Like that. How easy was that? Tighten that back up. Tighten this one up. And yeah, it's, it's quite important that you do this as safely as you can. Because, really guys, all these little screw heads and stuff that you're touching here, all these little screw heads, like for example, this one will be live, so if I touch this with a screwdriver, there's a chance I would get an electric shock rate, so this is why it's quite important that you try and cover these up as best you can. Alright, so next guys, all we have to do is grab these wires here, stick them in there, and we should be good to go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try and pair these up first. And just see what we can do. I mean, look at look how badly these have been cut. I mean, why is this one so long for a start? Let's try and pair them up as best we can, right? So I'm, I'm just going to match them length for length and do it like this, a couple of twists. And you want to just make sure that this is quite even because this is going to go into a little connector. Where did it go? It's way over here, you see it? So this is the ground wire. I'm going to push this into the hole where the ground wire is, like that. And you want to get this in as far as you can, guys, so there's no copper showing at all. Like that, you see it? Get it in there as far as possible. And then you want to tighten up the corresponding screw on the top, you see it? And then you want to do the next one and the next one the same. And I'll probably use some electrical tape just to go over these a little bit as well, I think. Just to try and make it that wee bit safer than this, because yeah, I understand that this isn't the safest way possible, but... You don't want to mess with electronics, electricity, especially mains electricity. And I'll keep on saying this, guys, all the way through the video. If you're not sure about this stuff, don't do it. Don't do it. So we're on the blue, which is the neutral. And blue just happens to be the middle one on this. I'm going to shove it in. To the middle bit there, all the way as far as it can go. So there's no copper showing right in as far as it goes. Because the last thing you want is for these to slip out and touch each other. Alright, next is the bottom one. See how that's just a tiny bit, a little bit, so I'm going to cover these with electrical tape, I think. So the brown is the live. Let's tidy these up. And then we're going to connect them together. Now, if I had all the proper stuff here, I'd probably solder these together. And this is going to go into our top connector here, which is the brown one, the live one. And, and again, I'm going to push this in as hard as you can, like so. And then you're going to tighten it up. 
Right, and our light should be working now. Once uh, we want to test this, it will be working. So the ground is there as well, guys, just in case. For some reason, if the live happens to touch something metallic in the box and then you touch it and you can possibly be shocked, that's what the ground is there for. It gives you that tiny bit little protection. Right, so there is our wiring. None too pretty. Uh, but let's just see if these actually work first. And they both do. Right, guys, so there is my electrical tape job. By no means perfect, but it will do for now. There's nowhere for water to get through. And guys, I have to make this clear as well. The, these lights and stuff are all advertised as being completely waterproof. I would suggest that they're more water resistant than waterproof because, as I said, if I drop these in water, I can probably much guarantee that they would short. Right, so they're good for like splash, rain, whatever else. But yeah, don't don't think that because they say waterproof that you can plop them in the tank because yeah, you'll have an accident. Let's uh, get these onto the board up there and get into the next part. All right, so I have unplugged the mess. Let's see if we can slide this out. It should twist and turn. And guys, don't laugh at my the way I've done these. I actually didn't know that I did these so bad, but. <laughs> Yeah, you can see why I want to change everything because yeah, they're they're just done so so badly and so unsafe. Hey guys, the camera. Of course, the camera wasn't recording all that time. I did actually remove the brackets. I just used a uh, hacksaw and cut off the screws, so I can save these brackets because I can attach these lights back onto this later. Um, next, we have to add our other light. So this is one of them that's on already, screwed into position. I'm going to use a screw and a washer and we are going to add our other light over here. Now I have measured it to here but hopefully the cable is long enough. It doesn't quite look like it is. Oh my god you mother. So we're kind of, yeah this will work. It, <laughs> it's not going to look pretty but um, it will work. So uh, let's start our little screw hole over here. Okay, so here is the monstrosity. You can see I turned this light round so it's the same orientation as this and I also took this light off so it was easier to put the bracket in. It's something you should all do is just take the light off and put the bracket on first then reattach the light because it makes it so much easier, right? And you want this to have a little bit of play so you can adjust it when it's above the tack. Like so, you see? Now we can adjust this. It's just a little bit slack. I don't want it facing in the way, like sorry, and I'm happy enough with that. There is our light, right? If, if, if I was being really pernicky, I'd probably spray paint this as well, take these tags off, but uh, they're, they're not doing any harm. So it is the moment of truth, guys. I'm looking at the door because I want you guys to see that all the other lights are still on. And yeah, this is how good the tanks now look. Look at that. Do you not just absolutely love that effect that you get with this spotlight LED that you do not get with any other type of light? It's what I want in all my tanks. And yeah, guys, I am just blown away with the way it makes things look. It makes some things brighter and it makes some things darker and there's just like that massive difference in contrast on everything. And this is just so awesome. Look at this tank. This is actually the way I've been wanting to do this tank for a while because Opa Uli naturally come from ponds that have caves and whatever else going to them. So this would be more like the natural habitat than anything else you will see on YouTube from an actual breeder in a room. I mean, not like in the wild, but yeah, isn't it awesome? Um, I did get the spacing wrong on this light here. It was a way over here and I had to move it to there. That's the only change. But yeah, I am more than happy with the way these lights have turned out. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think as well. And let me know, guys, how you would change this connection here. If you could, how would you make this safer? Because that's what I want to know. I'm going to learn how to solder and all that kind of stuff. I've done soldering before, but I've never done it for lights. So uh, it should be quite a simple thing to look look at that oh isn't it awesome guys thank you for watching if you enjoyed today's show then please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you all 
in the next one. Thank you for watching.